Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian and we have another really exciting video for you all today. If you've watched the channel for a little while, you know that when I do my end of the year wrap ups, I like to do lists that involve my favorite picks of the year. I do lists that involve favorite rare and allocated of the year. And what I'm doing a little bit differently this year is I'm really breaking it all down just to see how many lists I can come up with. Bourbon, rye, American whiskey, finished whiskey, rare and limited, picks, craft. Well, this bottle, if I'm going to be doing a list, spoiler alert, of my favorite finished whiskeys of the year, and there's several I've already got on that list that you haven't heard me talk about on the channel. Let me know if you want to hear about those. But this bottle will likely make it on the list. This comes from a distiller that's no stranger to the channel, and it's from the folks at Dancing Goat up in Wisconsin. You may have remembered the Intra Proof podcast, me and Drew P. Whiskey. We did the pick of this seven-year-old American corn whiskey that blew my socks off delicious bottle and an amazing value. And we're back again with another source product. I would ride for you. The release number two in this uh, Dancing Goat Presents or these source whiskey series things that they're doing. And it's seven year rye, six and a half year before aging six additional months in port barrels. 110.4 proof. You can see they just decided, why don't we just take all that rye mash and stick it there in the port and see what's gonna happen. Well, what's gonna happen is this dark, dark red juice. Let's go ahead and just pop this sucker. Go ahead and pour it on out. Before we get too far, jump down below, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, help me continue to grow the channel here in 2023. Now, I will say, for anyone who doesn't know, recently I did start a new full-time job with my friends at Sealbox, and so, this is a bottle that we have available through Sealbox. Now, I don't want you to think that that biases me to the channel. Hopefully you know by now that when I bring content to the channel, it's things I really wanna talk about that I'm really excited about, have a good value, or in this particular case, I have a lot of people who always ask me, hey, what are you leaning towards? What are you pouring right now? What are you drinking right now? What's a good value? What's a bottle I can actually acquire? And at the end of the, the year, when I make those lists and, and I say, hey, there's stuff that you could get through the year. And people always yell and they scream and they say, I couldn't get that throughout the end of the year. Life's not fair. Bourbon sucks. Everybody sucks. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you're following the channel and you're watching this video right now, this bottle is available to you at the link below if it's something that sounds good to you. Indiana Distilled 95.5 Rye. Again, this is from Dancing Goat in Wisconsin. And again, look at this color. Man, not only is it super dark, but it's a really interesting, inviting red color. Let's try and see if we can get some of the legs on this glass as well. And for anyone who maybe has looked at the Sealbox website already, maybe they've seen my tasting notes on there already, spoiler, you're gonna hear some of that again, but let's go ahead and dive in here on the nose. And <laughs> man, the nose is crisp and sweet and enjoyable. There are things that lean towards candied or caramel apple, but then what I really get the, the, the most on this nose is it's got this sugary sweetness that if you had a rye infused strawberry jam and you, you take your knife, you stick it in the jar and you just slather it on a fresh biscuit. So you got now this layer of jam that's on there. It's big old dense fluffy biscuit. And you just drink a bite out of it. That's really close to the aroma that I'm getting here on this whiskey's nose. Little nuanced layered spice in there, real nice creamy kind of creme brulee, toasted sugar top, powdered sugar, raspberry maybe on there, a little raspberry in the corner, you know, break the crust, get a little, try and like split the raspberry evenly, the one raspberry evenly among the whole creme brulee kind of thing. That's what's going on here. Sweet, a little spiced, but Definitely deep and got a lot of that fruit sweetness. Let's go ahead and dive in on the palate. Ooh, I'm in a ride. This is jammy and, and rich right away. It's got a lot of sugared berries on the front. Whether you get into the strawberry, raspberry, kind of a raisiny plum kind of thing in there, maybe some black cherry notes. There's definitely some big fruit, sugary sweetness there on the front. And I don't want you to get confused and think that it's too sweet, but I don't want you to get confused and think it's not sweet either. 
There's definitely some sugary fronts to this, but it's not one of those really desserty pours that you couldn't drink more often than just one sip in a night. In fact, this actually has a flavor to it that really draws me to keep going back for more. It has this kind of mouth wetting sensation that has me like, man, I really gotta get another sip of it. It's really juicy. With that right in the mid palate, you get some toasted oak notes right in the center, especially if you take a big old nice Kentucky chew with it, then you really start to bring out some more complex layers of baking spice. It's not overly complex, but you get more layers of spice come out if you chew on a little bit, and a little bit more of the barrel oak presence comes out a little bit as well. Really creamy, really jammy, vanilla and caramels kind of sitting right in this kind of pocket. So you go from the very sweet to caramel and vanilla's sweet. But I think what I like the most about it are the tannins that linger on the palate. You have this kind of wine-like acidity, and uh, it makes me think of coming from the, the coffee section of things, some of these natural processed, anaerobic processed coffees that I've had recently with these really interesting acidic profiles, kind of has that here, but it doesn't shave off this kind of nice, warm, oaky tannin to it as well the longer it lingers. So a lot of jamminess, good sugariness, but still with a balanced amount of spice before a nice, long, but balanced tannin finish as well. What I really wish I had this to compare to recently, this past weekend, was Pursuit Palooza. And while there, they had all these different brands that were in. Sagamore Spirits was there, and I was able to try for the first time the port finished rye that Sagamore did. And again, I don't have that here to compare to. I remember really enjoying it, and man, do I wish I had that to compare. But either way, for the price that this sucker is, and the fact that it's available right now, this is super easy drinking. And again, the kind of mouth wetting sensation that it's dangerous to drink. I wouldn't say it drinks more or less its proof. I don't actually think about its proof of the 110.4. I think it just drinks well, and I keep wanting to go back to it because it's so juicy and refreshing that I just want to keep sipping it. This is perfect for this time of year. It's really refreshing. I think I could drink it outside. I think I could drink it with a cube. I think I can make it um, as an old fashioned. It almost already tastes like a cocktail in and of itself because it's kind of got that vermouthy kind of sweetness already to it. But again, never forgetting the fact that it still has a very nice rye presence, nice rye backbone, nice rye spices uh, to, to continue on being balanced in there. So. I would say if you're not one for finished whiskeys, then I don't know, questionable about whether you like this. My wife, for example, isn't a really big rye drinker, but I gave her this and she kind of note, noted the caramel apple notes and the really nice sweetness to it. She said, oh, that's a rye I could enjoy drinking. So maybe if you need someone to change your mind about rye, want something a little sweeter, a little different, this would be an interesting kind of finished rye for you. If you like finished rye whiskeys or finished whiskeys in general, this is gonna be a really fun one too. That is the Dancing Goat I Would Rye For You. Seven year rye whiskey. Again, as I mentioned, available at the time of this recording at sealbox.com. Please don't yell at me. It's not available at the time of you watching this, but I hope for some of you, you all able to get this and you can let me know what you think about it when purchasing. Again, let me know down in the comments below how you'd like me to handle videos like this. I'll have a steady stream of things coming into the house that are gonna be available at Sealbox, and if they're awesome bottles, surely you wanna know about it, right? Let me comment down below. Let me know how you'd like me to navigate it. For now, I'll probably just put a playlist together that talks about Sealbox availability bottles down below so people can navigate those as they're available. Thanks as always everybody for tuning in to another video. Let me know if you've tried Dancing Goat. Let me know if you've tried this I Would Rye for you, whether it's from a previous release or uh, whether it's from uh, picking it up at the distillery or somewhere else and what you all have thought about it down below. Also, let me know what your favorite finished ryes are down in the comments below. I'd love to know if there's other things I should be checking out, whether it's here on the channel or maybe to put head to head against that. Thanks everybody for following with another video. Until next time, we'll see you all later.